hearers now? Thank you. I still don't hear myself. But, oh, there we go. Now you can hear me. All right. All is right with the world. Thank you. Welcome to the regular meeting of Monday, December 17th. If we could please have Councillor Forrest lead us in the pledge. Thank you. Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councillor Breton? Here. Councillor Forrest? Here. Councillor Hurley? Here. Councillor Latina? Councillor Lesser? Here. Councillor Rell? Here. Councillor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Martino? Here. And Warren, uh, Mayor Warren Bello? Here. Thank you. Um, we have no hearings this evening, so our first um, item of business will be public comment. Members of the public can speak for five minutes. If you would please state your name and address. Are there any members of the public who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Colantonio, come on up. Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Guess what I'm going to talk about tonight? The stop sign. Now, it's been a while. Been one, over 10 years. Could you speak into the microphone because you can't hear me? Oh, uh, well, it's my Sorry, voice. they're not. They're not. My, my, vo right my voice. No, no, it's not the microphone. It's me. I guess I'm, I have a sweet voice. It's not very high. And it, does, <laughs> it doesn't carry, but we try. Uh, I went to the engineering department today again and asked a few questions, and it's, it seems that I never get the right answer. At one point I said, uh, what's the existing right-of-way on Morrison Avenue? And they told me, says, well, well it's, it's varying. In front of your house might be different uh, than in front of somebody else's house. He says, okay, I will not, how do you say, prolong that. And I went to some other questions. But anyway, I've done the homework. I've been studying this place you know, for the past nine, 10 years. And obviously, it doesn't seem that anybody listens. Uh, as, as I said before, Morrison Avenue never connected to Silas Dean until 1955. Statement, it's true. The existing right of way on Morrison Avenue, it's 50 feet wide. The existing right of way on Hillcrest is 80 feet wide. And I'm going to compare the two streets because they are two parallel streets. They are the same, basically. One is much safer than the other, but there are some discrepancies. So, 80 foot right of way for Hillcrest and 50 foot right of way for Morrison Avenue. The frontage setback, I ask the question again, says, well, what's the frontage setback for Morrison Avenue? And nobody knows, so, well, it's zone A, so it's 40 feet. It's 40 feet now, I said, but what was it when Morrison Avenue was originally built? Why 50 feet right away on one side and 80 feet on the other? Nobody has an answer. But anyway, in front of my house, I do have a 30-foot setback, which means what? A 30-foot setback is from the street line. And when you go from the center line of a 50-foot right of way, you go 30 feet setback and 25 feet half of the right of way, it's only 55 feet from the center line of the road. When you go to Hillcrest Avenue, you have an 80-foot right-of-way and 40-foot setback, which means that the houses are 80 feet from the center line of the road. 80 feet versus 55. It doesn't seem like a lot. Percentage-wise, it's a lot. And the noise, the way it travels, it's unbelievable. Now. Why, why were the houses built only 30 feet from the street line on Morrison Avenue and 40 feet with an 80-foot right-of-way on Hillcrest? I truly believe that Morrison Avenue was never meant to connect it to Silas Dean. This is my belief. And as long as anybody or nobody can prove otherwise, that's what I'm going to believe. There is an existing right-of-way on Tifton that connects to church. That's the way it was supposed to connect, I believe. There is a 50-foot right-of-way right here. 
It's just a, a path now. So the question was, that's the way it was supposed to be built? Probably. But let me go again. Let me go again before my time is, is up. Uh, the intersection, side distance, and hill crest and orchard, it meets all the requirements. The intersectional side distance on Tifton and Morrison Avenue is 232 feet. That's only good for 23, 24 miles per hour. Again, it's posted for 25, and it doesn't meet standards. Now, how long are we going to wait before we do something? Are we going to be proactive in this time or reactive? Are we going to wait until something happens, like not too long ago, two years ago or a year ago, when there was an accident on the driveway? If they had done the work, the town or the property owner, that would not have happened. Now, you can say that's just your judgment. God says, yes, it's my judgment and my opinion. I've been in the business of engineering for 37 years, and I think I know a little bit about roadway design. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Come on up, Rich. Good evening, Rich Bailey, 160 Broad Fire Chief. Uh, on behalf of the entire department, I wanted to thank the past council for allowing us to start the process and this council for approving our two new engines, uh, which will serve the community for 30 years to come. Uh, and simply wish you a very Merry Christmas and a happy and prosperous New Year. Thank you for everything. Thanks, Rich. Anybody else would like to speak tonight? Mr. Young? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. I noticed in the current that the MDC adopted their multi-million dollar budget for water rates and sewer rates and whatever else. Just another gouging of the public by this, by this whatever you want to call it, an agency. And you, Mayor, you said you were going to write them a real tough letter. I did. You did. Who would listen to you? Excuse me? Who would listen to you? <laughs> you, don't represent, you don't represent what we call someone who fights for tax reductions. I wrote it and sent and, and, it. And cost reductions. You, you represent price increases. Why would they listen to you? You know, I've been talking to you about, the, anyway, this MDC is a terrible mess, like the rest of the state of Connecticut. I've been talking about uh, the Keisha Farm, as we've been going through meetings and meetings here. Uh, and I've spoke to you about the two different sales that occurred in 2018. Uh, one was, uh, and, and the two sales averaged uh, $20,500 an acre which I think is probably reasonable, but 75,000 per acre that you're going to be paying for the Keisha farm is totally unreasonable. I believe at the last meeting when I was interrupted by your time schedule, I was starting to talk about a property that was for sale in Stamford, Connecticut. This was a 15 acre parcel, almost double what the Keisha farm is. And it's on the market for $1.2 million. And it comes out to be like almost $79,000 an acre. A little more than what you're paying here in Wethersfield for some barren land. This is surrounded by many mansions. And this is their asking price, $1.2 oh, $1 million for 15 acres. You're buying 32 acres for 2.4. Pretty close comparison. Uh, not that it's a comparison of towns. It's a comparison of price and how it appears you are paying Stanford, Connecticut prices way up here in Wethersfield in the center of the state where land is only selling for the average in 2018 raw land for 20, $20,000, $21,000 an acre. 
very highly overpriced. I've also noticed, since I'm down in that, eastern, eastern Connecticut, another ritzy kind of a neighborhood. They had an 18-acre parcel for $625,000. That was $60,000 an acre, a little closer to yours. 30-acre um, parcel for $1.5 million. That came out to $50,000 an acre. This is in Easton, down where millionaires live. We don't have millionaires up here who pay taxes and every other thing. Easton again, 10-acre parcel for $600,000. That's 60,000 bucks an acre. Way down there, they're, they're selling for less per acre than you are up here in Weathersfield. Look at Farmington. Ritzy, another ritzy town right nearby us. They have a five acre parcel. And I know there's a big difference between five acres and 32 acres. But the fact remains, five acres for $275,000, it comes out to $54,000 an acre. In Weathersfield, you guys just decided 75,000 was a good number. Yet in Farmington, on Mountain Road, with a lot of nice homes, it's 54,000 an acre. Here's another one closer to you in Farmington as well, 4.25 acres, $300,000, that's $70,000 an acre. <clears throat> a little closer, but that's Farmington. We don't come anywhere near Farmington. We got a lot of people in town that don't have the, the demographics are so much different. We can't afford $75,000 lots, and that's what you're buying. You're buying raw land based on lot price. That's not the way you do business. Now, there's even more in here that pop up. Um, I believe it was uh, Glassenberry had another one for, for 30 acres. And that came out, that was a $1.3 million price, priced at $43,000 an acre. Pretty nice property, I'm sure. But it's, the price is so much lower than what you folks agreed to with the purchase of the Keisha farm. Okay, please wrap I, up, Mr. Young. Yes, yes, madam. And uh, I have more, more keep popping up, it appears, for sale, not sold. Think about that, folks. There's only a few acreage properties that sold in 2018 in our area. Thank but, you. But there appears to be more and more popping up that are for sale and they're not moving. Thank you very much, I'll be back. Okay, is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? <clears throat> All right, seeing no one, we will move into council reports. Are there any council members who have reports tonight? <clears throat> Councilor Lesser? Thank you, Mayor. Um, last Monday night, December 10th, we had the first uh, meeting of the newly created uh, Veterans Committee. We had a really terrific group. <clears throat> And we also had uh, several people who were not on the committee who attended to see what we were doing. And besides just introducing everybody, welcoming and talking about how we can best help veterans in Weathersfield, the most significant thing is uh, we decided to partner with the high school on, the, on a special 75th anniversary of D-Day. So on June 6th, um, 2019, which is a Thursday, we will have a um, ceremony at uh, the Weathersfield High School with all 1,200 or so students, uh, hopefully on the football field. That's the plan right now, and we're coordinating that with the schools, and we're just getting started with that, but more to come because we hope it's a wonderful public event in commemorating a very important point in uh, our history and the history uh, obviously World War II and, and the war. So it was a great first meeting and keep you all updated on what we're doing with the Veterans Committee. Thank you, Mayor. Great, thank you. Are there any other reports? Deputy Mayor? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, last week there was an EDIC meeting where uh, we were brought up to speed on all the vacant properties in town and there's some interest in some of them, which I'm glad to see, so things are moving along on those. Also last week, uh, EDIC along with the chambers put on the annual salute to business and uh, at that uh, the uh, that bookstore received the uh, 
WVIA Business Beautification Award. Longevity awards for uh, being in business went to uh, Vito's Pizzeria, the Great Meadows Conservation Trust, and the Farley Sullivan Funeral Homes. Special uh, recognitions awards went to uh, 275 Ridge Road, the new apartments up there. Uh, River Restaurant, that bookstore, Pasta Vita, Caliban Roman, and Restaurant Supply Com, a uh, couple of new businesses in town. And the annual award that goes for, and the Betty Rosanya Award this year went to uh, Joe Hickey, who has been involved on many commissions in town, has done wonders work for the town over the years. Thank you. Any other reports? Councilor Rell? The Historical Society uh, met two weeks ago, uh, I believe on December 5th, uh, just uh, shortly after the, uh, no, um, shortly before the um, Holidays on Main uh, event. And um, they did report that they were using it for a fundraising effort. And I followed up afterwards, and sure enough, they did uh, raise a number of funds for the Historical Society at the Holidays on Main event. Um, they are always looking for additional funds. And one thing that they have offered uh, for the public is to buy a ceremonial brick, uh, an engraved brick for the back um, entrance to the Keeney Center. I believe it's $150. They, um, they are still taking orders for those, and they do it in lumps of 10. So um, they're holding out for two or three more orders to put in another order for 10 for the end of this year. Hopefully they will make that and uh, people can contribute. Also, what they are doing is, uh, this is the second year in a row that they've done it for the holidays. They've um, contracted with uh, some folks for wreaths, and they put wreaths uh, for those families that buy them uh, on gravestones at the um, uh, old cemetery uh, church in Old, we uh, old Weathersfield. And um, it actually looks uh, pretty nice down there, so if you do drive by, and uh, you see some of those, it is a good investment for next year to uh, memorialize somebody who, uh, a loved one who may be buried there and um, you know, purchase it for an additional uh, donation to the Historical Society. Thank you. Any other reports? Moving into council comments. Any council members have comments? Councilor Hurley. I do. I'm just kind of wondering what the next steps for the MDC is. We only, of our three commissioners, only one of them voted no. I think we asked them to vote no. Only one voted no. We sent them a letter, and I don't know why our commissioners who are from Weathersfield and kind of are supposed to take our advice still vote yes on things, even though we don't want them to. Thank you. I think we should, we can have a conversation. Um, with them to find out why they voted yes. I think that would be a good idea. Are there any other council comments? Deputy Mayor? Uh, I just wanted to say on uh, December 7th, my wife and I and Kenny Lesser were at the State Legislative Office building. Our former town mayor, Dan Camilleri, was honored that night and entered into the Military Wall of Fame. Uh, we all know what a short guy Danny is but his smile was bigger than his height. <laughs> I mean, he was ecstatic that night to be presented that award, and uh, I just want to throw some kadoos out to Danny for all this stuff. And it was based on what he did after his military service to help people. So, I mean, he's had a lot of accomplishment to earn that, and uh, kadoos out to our former mayor. Thank you. Any other comments? Councilor Forrest. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, just to the town manager, if you could just, I just ask that you work with the town engineer to continue to rectify the paving job on Main Street. That continues to basically, I now have potholes in it, even though it was just refurbished. And I'm not specifically talking about the potholes, but all of the mantle covers and MDC covers that are clearly significantly below grade to render the project in need of a repair. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council comments? Okay, I just have a few. I'd like to, um, as always, thank the town staff, Chamber of Commerce, and the local merchants for the Holidays on Main. It was quite a successful event. It was very well attended. Um, I, too, attended the Salute to Business, and the EDIC put on a great event. It was a sellout, and I'd like to offer my congratulations to Vito's, Farley Sullivan, Great Meadows Conservation Trust, and of course, Joe Hickey for his lifetime of community service. Um, the, the 
Board of Ed Chair Bobby Granado and I had office hours, I guess you'll call them, at Heirloom Market on Saturday morning. Uh, we did not have great turnout, but we had a lively conversation regarding school playgrounds, the Brainerd Airport, uh, tree cutting that's potentially coming up this spring, and plans for Keisha Farm. I'd also like to remind everybody that tomorrow is the meet and greet for town manager candidates, 6.30 to 8 at the Keeney Cultural Center. We welcome the members of the public to come to meet our potential town, new town manager to ask questions and then to provide that feedback back to us. You can send us an email to our town email address. That would be the best way to get in touch with us. Uh, you can also contact Kathy Bagley um, or give us a phone call. And I too would like to congratulate former Mayor Dan Camilleri on his induction into the Connecticut Veterans Hall of Fame and also thank <coughs> Deputy Mayor Martino for nominating him for that great honor. So thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, and if that's all, anybody else? We'll move into town manager reports. Oh, one other quick thing. I just texted my husband and he said Frontier <coughs> is working tonight for um, the, for the meeting. I'm not sure about Cox Cable, but Frontier seems to have worked out their issues and the meetings being televised through them. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, <clears throat> that's a good lead in for me because staff have been working with both Frontier and Cox Cable to make sure the video going out of the council chambers is working. They've done a lot of work on replacing equipment and looking into what the issues are. We believe we've corrected it. We'll probably hear tomorrow if there were any other issues. It's good to hear Frontier is good, and now we'll wait to hear if Cox is working. We've tested it. We've heard from other meetings that it has been working, so hopefully it's working tonight also. And Kathy, um, the problems that we've been experiencing are with um, the provider. It's not internal. It's the way it's being sent out. Is that correct? That is correct. Our equipment here has been tested, and it's getting the signal out. Both cable companies, there were issues with some of their equipment and the way the signal was going. Okay, thank you. Any other? Um, just to mention, um, Councillor Forrest mentioned Main Street. The town engineer is, is aware of that with the, um, the, lower, the lower manhole covers. They are aware of it and they'll be rectified in the spring. Okay, so that has, that's waiting until the spring? Just because the plants are shut down now. <clears throat> All right. Anything else? They have been working on Main Street, though. I mean, I, I live right around the corner, and I dodge the cones and the <laughs> workers practically every morning. Um, but they have uh, the big dip one right on the bend from Main Street to Wells Road has been fixed, and some of the uh, culverts have been fixed uh, that I do know. And they did a good job on Garden Street as well the second time around. That was a little wavy, and I did hear complaints from some of my neighbors, um, but they, uh, that was an MDC fix, if I'm not mistaken. So they that, can use that money wisely that they take from us, I guess. Thank you. Town Clerk, do you have a com any communications? No, I do not. Okay, thank you. We'll move into council action. There are some acceptances of resignations. Do I have a motion? A motion. Um, resignations from Capital Improvement Advisory Committee, Leslie C. Call, 69 Bolter Road. Also resignation from the Redevelopment Agency, Colleen Sheridan, 179 Dale Road. Both terms ending 6-30-2020. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. And I believe we have one more resignation, a couple more resignations. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, from the Solomon Wells House Committee, we have Teresa Urbanski of 46 Marmore Court, whose term ended June 30th. Um, well, actually, ends, yeah, June 30th. And, and then from the Tourism Commission, Ellen Spratlin, 115 Broad Street, whose term ended June 30th as well. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Abstentions? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 
We have an appointment. Do you have a motion? Yep, I'd like to make a motion for an appointment to the Veterans Commission, Harry Newell, 308 Knott Street, 1217, 18 to 630, 2020. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Just real quick. Yes. Uh, I did have a, the pleasure of meeting, I guess it's Ron Newell, but Harry Ron Newell. He uh, came to the meeting, I believe, two meetings ago where the Veterans Committee was uh, established. He did voice his concerns then about uh, uh, some of the appointments or lack of appointments that were made. And uh, I do um, congratulate the, uh, the council for considering um, his appointment to this uh, newly created um, council or committee. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we will move into the lease agreement for financing. Do we have a motion? Motion to authorize the town manager to enter into a lease agreement with TD Equipment Finance, Inc. for the financing of the purchase of two Stiffen fire engines and the fiscal year 19 CNAF rolling stock. Second. Okay, and I see Mike O'Neill, finance director, is here. Good evening. Good evening. Um, just a brief summary on this item. Uh, there were several pieces of equipment that were approved um, in previous months for purchase. Two fire engines. Uh, total amount for those is $1.1 million approximately. Um, and then four police uh, interceptors. Those were included as part of the fiscal 19 budget in the capital non-recurring expenditure. Uh, appropriation and those uh, cost a total of $171,000 and then also uh, a Freightliner plow truck costing $196,000 that was also approved in part of the capital non-recurring expenditure uh, appropriation in this year's budget. Um, all of those have been approved for purchase um, either from state contracts or bids and uh, now we have to pay for them, which requires us to enter into a lease agreement. So we sent uh, a solicitation out to a number of banks. We got 10 responses back. Uh, there were two that were very close. One is TD Equipment Finance, who we have worked with for the past couple of years, and the other was Bank of America. Um, both had very competitive rates. If you look at the total interest cost for all of the equipment, over all the years of the payments, uh, Bank of America had about a $1,600 uh, difference. It was about $1,600 less. Um, we would, if we went with Bank of America, we would have to uh, enter into new, a new lease agreement, which would require legal costs, probably at least that much, $2,000 or something like that. So, uh, you know, to me. Um, it kind of puts them on equal footing. Um, we've had, like I said, very good success working with TD Equipment Finance, and um, that was why I recommended uh, staying with them. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Okay, no questions. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the approval of uh, local 2001 contract. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve the CSCA SEIU local 2001 custodians maintenance collective bargaining agreement effective July 1, 2018 and July, excuse me, June 30th, 2021. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Good evening, Stephanie. Thank Good you. evening. Stephanie Asklin, Human Resources Manager. So first to discuss the custodial and maintenance uh, contract. In July of 2018, custodians and maintenance employees came uh, under the direction of the town as a result of the shared services agreement. This is the first negotiation with the custodians and maintenance that the town has taken the lead on. Uh, we did have the Board of Education at the table with us as well. The management negotiation team consisted of interim town manager Kathy Bagley, Sally Katz, physical services director, 
Trent Donahue, Board of Ed HR Director. The union negotiating team consisted of Jim Strong, Rich DeVito, Bill Fisk, Jim DeCenza, Dan Harrison. Uh, the beginning of negotiations, there was a lot of discussion about the need to reinstitute the third shift at the high school, uh, an evening shift from 1030 at night until uh, 630 in the morning. And we were able to do that outside of negotiations through an MOU, so I, I want to thank the union for the willingness to work with us on, uh, rather than having that go through negotiations, uh, settle it through an MOU, Memor Memorandum of Understanding and we were able to implement the third shift in the high school in September. Um, so I just wanna go over the financial summary of the contract. Now this is for a three year agreement. Uh, this union consists of 42 positions. The GWI, uh, there was a total GWI for the life of the contract, and when I say the life of the contract, that means the three year contract, total of 5%. It was broken down to the first year 2%, second year 2%, and third year 1%. Um, with regard to steps, there will be steps in year one and two, and none in the third year. There will be an increase of the OPEB employee contribution, 0.50%. Uh, there was also an increase to the annual stipend for the head custodian, of $2,000. Um, this is as a result of the, the extra space um, due to the renovation and the number of items and, and events that are going on in the high school organizing that. We did increase the shoe allowance by $50. These are required safety shoes. Um, and we also uh, approved employees to receive an insurance waiver if they opt out of the town's medical and dental health insurance plans. So the overall cost is approximately 1,049, 100, excuse me, $149,000 or an average of approximately $50,000 per fiscal year. Okay, do we have any questions? Okay, oh, Councilor Rell. Nobody's gonna ask any questions, I might as well. Can't just let it go. <laughs> uh, is there a uh, retroactive pay to uh, July 1 for this contract? For the custodians, there is a retroactive on their steps and on the GWI to July 1 of 2018, yes. Okay, um, and this was, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, shared services, this is the, between the Board of Ed and the town side. Um, have we seen through attrition uh, a loss of um, staff because of that? I mean, it, this says we're at 42 uh, employees. Was there a, a number before the uh, merging or the, the shared services aspect of this? I would imagine that that's the same number of 42. Uh, we have had individuals retire. However, we have replaced uh, their positions. We have filled their positions. Those retiring, if I might ask, were they higher up with uh, which would have been higher step increases and then we've brought in lower or That's correct. like for like? Uh, no, there were two individuals that retired uh, and they were higher on the pay grade list because of their years of service. Uh, so we did bring in individuals that started that start at the beginning of the pay grade for that. So they are getting paid a lesser amount. Okay. And then finally, the step, there are two step increases for this year 18 and next year 19. Do we know what those step increases are? <clears throat> yes. For fiscal year 18-19, the amount of the step is 32185 and for fiscal year 1920, it's 24,443. And in the third year, there is no step. Okay. And that's factored into the 149,639, those, those two figures? It is. That 149 figure uh, is comprised of the GWI, the steps. Okay, I see uh, it. 32,185. Yep, sorry. 24,443, and then zero for. Uh, 
FY 2021. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, and we have another contract approval. Do I have a motion? Move to approve CLIU Local 222 Library Supervisors Collective Bargaining Agreement and Library Non-Supervisory Collective Bargaining Agreement effective July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2020. I'm sorry, 2021. Okay, and do we have a second? Second. All right. Stephanie? Thank you. Um, just to point out that I want to thank the management negotiation team and the union negotiation team. The management negotiation team consisted of interim town manager Kathy Bagley and Brooke Berry, library director. The union negotiating team consisted of Bridget Hucker, Elaine Zeller, Regina Alexandrovich, and Celia Allison. This is for two contracts, both the supervisors and the non-supervisors. The supervisors consist of three positions. The non-supervisors consist of 13 positions. This is for a three-year contract. And again, I will go over the financial summary of it. Uh, the GWI for the life of the contract is 5.25. To break that down for you, the first year is 2%. The second year is 1.25%. And the third year is 2%. There are no steps in the first year, so there will be steps in the second and third year of the contract. The defined benefit employee contribution increase will increase 0.5% over the life of the contract. It's a 0.25% increase the first year and the second year of the contract. For OPEB, other post-employee benefits, there is a 0.50% increase for the life of the contract and that is a 0.25% increase the first year of the contract and the second year of the contract. As far as the cost of this, uh, the approximate cost is about $53,000. Uh, so if you look at it from a monthly perspective, it's about, uh, I'm sorry, from an annual perspective, it's about 17,600 per fiscal year. One thing to note on this is there is no retro for the GWI. Uh, for the first year of the contract, and there's no steps the first year of the contract, so there's no uh, retro on steps, of course. And the defined benefit increase, as well as the OPEB increase, will also uh, be effective December 24th, along with the GWI. Thank you. Are there any questions on this contract? Councilor Lesser? Thank you, Mayor. First a comment and then a question. Uh, comments for the public. If you're not sure what the GWI, it's the gross wage increase, gross wage increase. But my uh, question for you, Stephanie, is um, can you explain or let us know, do the non-supervisors and the supervisor, are they always covered under the same contract? I know they are here, but are they always lumped together? They're, in fact, covered under separate contracts. We negotiate them in parity, at the, usually at the same time, or we'll have one group setting, and then we'll have the other group setting. So they're, in fact, separate contracts. So as a follow-up, are they, so they have the same numeric increases, correct? They do. Is that typical? Yes. Okay, even though they're separate contracts uh, negotiated in some Somewhat parity. simultaneously. Okay. Somewhat. I, got it. I think I got it. Thank <laughs> um, you. Th there's ever slight differences between the contracts. Uh, for example, one of the differences in the insurance employee contribution rate, there's a difference in percentages uh, between what is paid by the employee between the supervisors and the non-supervisors. Okay, got it. Thank you, Mayor. Sure. Councilor Hurley? Hi, Stephanie. Is I'm this one retroactive to July 1st also? This is not. Okay. So the GWI gross wage increase, is uh, that will be effective December 24th of 2018, which is the beginning of a pay period. And there's no steps for the first year of the contract, so there's no retroactivity with that either because there, there are no steps. Thank you. Okay, are there any other questions? <clears throat> Councilor Rell? Stephanie, there is a one-time opt-in for current employees. This is for the uh, uh, work week increase from 35 to 37 and a half. Yes. Uh, how many employees would that affect if, uh, well, how many would it affect? 
Um, what we negotiated is new employees are going to work 37 and a half hours. The union requested that we make a one-time opportunity available to current employees so that if there is a desire by current employees to change from 35 to 37 and a half hours, they may do so. And I have only been made aware of a few, I think two to three at this point. Um, we have not opened it up, obviously, because the contract is not approved. So until we open it up to advise active employees of their option to move, I will not fully know. And would it be for the supervisors, the three positions for supervisors and the 13 positions for non-supervisor? So is, it could affect 16 if all 16 did it? It could, yes. And then do we know what that cost would be yearly for the additional two and a half hours? if it all opt in? Um, I don't have that figure, but what I can tell you is when we negotiated this contract or attempted to negotiate and, when it, and ended up in arbitration, one of the proposals was to move everybody to a 37 and a half hour work week, and it was met with strong resistance. So I very much doubt we're going to have a significant number of employees move to 37 and a half hours. Mm -hmm. When this issue was brought up in negotiations in the beginning, it was also um, met with a lot of resistance. That's why we ended up uh, settling with new, new hires, uh, working 37 and a half hours, and apparently there are a few employees currently that may be interested, and that's why the union asked that they be offered that one-time opportunity. My concern with that would be that not only are we paying them the GWI increase, step increases as well, but then we would also have to naturally pay more salary to them, to those that decide to add two and a half hours to their work week. Um, I guess it would be good on a fiscal, <coughs> conservative fiscal aspect, it would be a good uh, measure for the town to have as few as possible um, opt into that 37 and a half hour work week. Um, I guess it's good to know that uh, there is, is being met with resistance. Mm -hmm. But are we prepared to be able to pay for the increased hours if more decide to opt in? I can't come, I'm not that thoroughly familiar with the library budget, um, but we're already halfway through this fiscal year. And by the time we get the contract updated and we get the notification out to employee, we're looking at less than a six-month time period that it may impact this fiscal year. Okay. Um, and again, there's no retro. Right. So there's a savings right there of about $10,000 because there's no retro on the GWI for this fiscal year. Okay. Good. Good job. But I will definitely look into that and I will meet with uh, Brooke Berry and we can discuss the figures on that. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for all your negotiating on both contracts. Thank you. I know they were they were not easy, and it was a long process. Um, so, if there's no other comments or questions, all in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next item is the memorandum memorandum of agreement. Do I have a motion, Councillor Forrest? Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the memorandum of agreement regarding the use of federal fiscal year 2018 state homeland security grant funding and custodial ownership of regional assets in the DEMHS Region 3. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Kathy? This is an annual grant that we enter into with an MOA between the state, CRAG, the Capital Region Council of Governments, and the town for the disposition of federal homeland security funds. This is a regional approach to emergency management, and um, all the towns in the uh, in CRAG get involved in this, particularly in our region, and we get the uh, availability to use equipment and supplies for the town. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay. Seeing no questions, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we have no bids tonight. 
We have no ordinances or resolutions or appointments for introduction. So we now move into the minutes. Do I have a motion for the November 19th regular meeting? So moved, Your Honor. Okay. I mean, <laughs> Mayor. <laughs> wow, Long thanks. Day. Long day. <laughs> um, do we have a second? Second. All right. Are there any changes, corrections? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, meeting minutes pass. Um, do we have a motion for the December 3rd workshop meeting? Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay, are there any corrections, changes, omissions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? <clears throat> motion carries. Okay, well, it looks good. Moving into public comment. Any members of the public who would like to speak have five minutes if you'd state your name and address. Come on up, Mr. Colantonio. Good evening again. Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. I must say that I, I was impressed with that presentation. You know, the library always does a good job. I always say that uh, it's the best place in town. That's where to go. That's where there is a, no, not right here. Uh, it's beautiful. You know, I, uh, I often go. I used to go a little bit more often, but uh, I'm getting older, I guess. You know, so when I get comfortable at home, I don't like to, to go out, especially when it's cold. But it's they did a good job, you know. Basically, 5% in three years. I mean, I think it's pretty good. Uh, I also have to uh, I say, apologize because uh, I've been coming right here for the past 10 years. And in all honesty, I don't like it, but uh, I will not go away. So I'm going to be complaining as long as uh, not get my way, but as long as I don't get any answers. Because as I said before, and I'm going to say it again, the only answer I got so far is that there are too many stop signs in town. That's why I'm not going to get a stop sign on Morrison Avenue. As long as that's the only answer that I get, I'll be coming right here. And on the final note, I want to wish you guys, like, you know, that what we say in Italian, Buon Natale e Felice Anno Nuovo a tutti, which means happy, no, what is it? <laughs> Merry, Merry, <laughs> it says Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of you. Thank you. Thank Grazie. You. Thank you. <laughs> is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Oh, nothing, Mr. Mazzarella. Okay, Ms. Mr. Young, <laughs> a Christmas present. <laughs> Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Um, on the MDC, I didn't realize. I don't know what the I didn't know what the count or the vote was on the budget. I'm kind of surprised that only one person. Uh, voted no on that. That's pretty pathetic. Um, I don't know how many f total commissioners they have up there, but I understand we have three. And Mayor, if you were tough, I'd call those two in that voted no, uh, yes, for the budget, and I'd replace them if you were tough. I've been reading a couple, a number of articles on the. Um, the penalties and the juvenile uh, issues regarding uh, the discussion that the, fire, the police chief had up here a couple me a meeting or two ago, and uh, it's interesting meeting, and I uh, still think you know, and I agree with the chief. He does have some serious problems, and and it all boils right up to the state legislature, and uh, someone needs to handle those people. Of course, uh, when our delegation comes here. Our Hartford delegation, they're, handed, they're handled with kid gloves, and I think that's pretty bad. You should handle them rough because they are responsible for these problems that we have by loosening up the laws and making them so flimsy and uh, there's, no, there's no law and order anymore, and these young people are just doing what they want. Um, I'm sure in the Hartford Current you read on Sunday the... Uh, uh, John Lender article regarding that uh, gorgeous piece of property uh, that was being transferred to the state of Connecticut from some uh, political friend for $5.5 million. 
eight lousy acres on a railroad line for $5.5 million. That's $700,000 an acre, a little more than what you guys are paying for uh, the Keisha farm per acre. Um, thank goodness somebody stepped in and uh, forced uh, uh, an appraisal on that particular property. And that appraisal for the eight acres came out to be 550, $566,500. That came out to 70,800 bucks an acre. Big difference from $700,000 per acre to a crony. A crony who had made political donations to the rats, the rat up in Hartford, his political party. And he was gonna sell us out for $700,000 an acre. But anyway, under that, folks, I said, well, it's eight acres, eight lousy acres for, fi for, for $566,000. Times that by four, eight acres, 16 acres, 24 acres, 32 acres. That's what you're buying up at the, up at the Keisha farm. That would give you a sale price or a purchase price. Under that, under that appraised value, of $2.266 million, which is very close to your $2.4 million. Here you have land down on the coast, down on a railroad line, destined to become a railroad station someday, at least that's what they say, like you say, Keisha Farm is gonna be for open space, maybe playing fields, maybe government use, all kinds of baloney you use, for the Keisha farm, but here's a piece of property that runs in the same price range as you're paying for the Keisha farm. And you're way up here in poor Weathersfield, poor Harford area. That's pretty pathetic. The whole thing is pathetic. Now, let's also take another step, Mayor. You bought the Wilkes farm ten, back in 2010, 2011. You paid $3.5 million for it. It just sits there. Yeah, you, took, you sold off a three or four acres. But in fact, you have approximately 80 acres that you bought for open space and paid $3.5 million. That's $44,000 approximately per acre. And it just sits there. And I went and I looked up the street card you all know what these street cards are over at the assessor's office. Here's what I, here's what I come up with. You have it in three parcels. Okay, you have finish up, Mr. Madam, this is going to yeah. take a few minutes. Well, you want to really listen to this because this is, serious, seconds, this is serious discussion. You don't get many people out here tonight. You really should sit back and listen to this. You have bought three parcels. One was 34.74 acres. 21.81 acres and 21.39 acres for $3.5 million. Your assessor said in the, on the 2013 grand list, that property was valued at $1,058,000. A far cry from $3.5 million. Okay, thank you, now, Mr. She had Young. Run up, she had run up the 2017 grand list which they just created this week, or last week. And the value now is $759,000 for those three parcels. And it's gone down 29% since 19, 2013 till 2017, it's gone down. How in the world can you afford to pay $75,000 for a piece of rubbish up on a hill that has gone down in value, for, but you yep. paid up the Ms. hill on Mr. the price. Mr. Young, thank you, you for your know, comments. You got Time some is serious up. problems. Thank you, You, you have put us in a terrible okay, bind. So let, okay, we have a motion to adjourn. Yeah, sure, you Council can adjourn. Lester, Councilor Forrest has seconded. All in favor? Aye. I wish you a Merry Christmas if you're celebrating. Happy New Year. Thank you all. Did we take a vote? All in favor? Aye. Yeah, we did. Thank you.